Quidditch in the Harry Potter movies was cut down a lot, which makes sense as they had to make room for other storylines in the novels. Because of this though, I thought it would be fun to take a look back at how Quidditch was done in the books. However, we won't just do the seven books, but also the entire timeline of the Gryffindor Quidditch team spanning 336 years. We're going to go over McGonagall's time playing, as well as James Potter's, Charlie Weasley's, Harry's, and even the trio's kids later on in life. Before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor, G2A. G2A is a marketplace for digital products, similar to Amazon, but for games and software. I know a lot of you are so excited to play Hogwarts Legacy, and sellers on G2A offer Hogwarts Legacy Steam Game keys to purchase. But the best part about purchasing with G2A is that they are currently hosting a contest for 5 lucky wizards to win a trip to Orlando, Florida, Universal Studios' Wizarding World of Harry Potter. G2A will pay for the entire trip, flights, hotels, and tickets. I just recently went to Universal and visited Harry Potter World, and it was such a magical time and is a must-do for all Harry Potter fans. To take part in this contest, you have to buy something from G2A from February 3rd to February 26th, register your purchase on the contest website, and answer the short contest question where you get to design and name your spell. The order number from your completed purchase will become your contest ID when you use it to register for the contest. One purchase equals one chance to win, and you can sign up as many times as you want with separate purchases. Use my link in the description to enter the contest, g2a.com slash n slash movieflame. If you're thinking about buying Hogwarts Legacy, this is the place to do it, because it gives you a chance to win an incredible trip for all Harry Potter fans. Now that I've said that, let's get into the video. So the earliest history we have on the Gryffindor Quidditch team dates back to 1688 when the first recorded captain, Asterix Elixian, was running the team. During his tenure as captain, he saw the worst loss Gryffindor ever had during the 1691 to 1692 season. It was so bad that this would continue to be the worst loss for 300 years, and we'll come back to this stat in a bit. We know a few more captains that succeeded Asterix, as Philomena Alchin, a player part of Asterix's team, was captain from 1692 to 1696, and following that, I'll just go through them quickly. We have Angelina Appleby from 1696 to 1700, Una Bollington from 1700 to 1704, Concepta Batista from 1704 to 1708, Betty Bickering from 1708 to 1712, Hugh Biggs from 1712 to 1716, Mike Boone from 1716 to 1720, Jason Charmer from 1720 to 1724, and Sophia Prickett from 1724 to probably around 1727. Moving to the early 20th century, we have a familiar face to pop up on the Gryffindor Quidditch team, none other than Minerva McGonagall. She, like her mother, was a gifted Quidditch player, though it's unknown what position she played, though if I had to guess, I'd say a seeker or a chaser. During her seventh and final year, Minerva led her team to the finals against Slytherin, and in her final game that decided who got the Quidditch Cup, McGonagall was knocked off her broom as a result of a dirty foul from the Slytherin team. This fall took her out of the game, left her with a concussion, several broken ribs, and most of all, a lifelong desire to see Slytherin crushed on the Quidditch pitch, which of course carries into her time as the head of Gryffindor during the course of the seven books. Moving to the 1960s, we have a small mention of a player named RJH King who played on the Gryffindor Quidditch team and won an award for it in 1969. This can sort of be disregarded because there was also a plaque for an M. McGonagall there as well, saying that she played in the 1970s, which is impossible because she was a professor at that time, and there were no other M. McGonagalls because her father was a muggle. The 1960s did give us the highest scoring game of all time though, with a final score of 580 to 570, meaning there was a total of 1,150 points. Getting to the 1970s, the Gryffindor Quidditch team was blessed with the exceptional and very cocky James Potter. Many fans thought that he played Seeker like his son Harry, but Rowling actually revealed that he played Chaser. And if you're asking, then why was he playing with a snitch in the flashback, Rowling actually answered this. She said it was because it was easier to steal and hide than a quaffle and a lot more fun to play with. The film of course made his award say Seeker, but that was before Rowling revealed his true position. James was pretty popular because of his Quidditch skills, and he would oftentimes rumple up his hair to make it look like he just got off his broom to impress girls. It's unknown if he ever won a Quidditch Cup, but that plaque of his says all you need to know about his Quidditch skills. Now we reach the 1980s, which is the era where Charlie Weasley dominated the Quidditch pitch at Hogwarts. In the 1985 to 1986 school year, a second year Charlie played Seeker, and he was absolutely incredible, giving the Gryffindor team the reputation as the fastest team at the school, even while being on 
own a cheap room due to his family's financial struggles. In his rookie season, Charlie helped Gryffindor win the Quidditch Cup, and it was an incredible performance for Charlie as he caught the snitch to seal the championship. As sweet as that first year was though, Charlie was unable to bring them back to the promised land. In his second year playing, they had a new captain named Angelica Cole, and things just did not click the way they did the season before. Despite having a player like Charlie, they failed to win the Quidditch Cup in the 1986-1987 school year, the 1987-1988 school year, the 1988-1989 school year, the year that Charlie was actually made captain of the team, as well as the 1989-1990 school year, and Charlie's final year, the 19 to 1991 school year, which ended very badly, as they weren't just beaten by Slytherin in the final, but were flattened by them, crushing their hopes once again of winning the Quidditch Cup. However, the later losing years weren't all bad, as it was a time spent rebuilding a stacked Gryffindor roster, all thanks to the captain of the team, Charlie. First, in the 1988-1989 school year, Charlie's first year as captain, he brought on the second-year keeper, Oliver Wood, who was very talented. Then, during Charlie's final year where they got flattened, Charlie brought on his younger twin brothers, Fred and George, both of whom were in their second year, and though many said this was favoritism, the twins proved everyone wrong, as they were the high point of that season. That same season, Charlie also saw potential in a third-year girl named Alicia Spinnett, who didn't actually make the team, but Charlie kept her as a reserve chaser. Then, that brings us to the 1991-1992 season, where Oliver Wood took over as captain from Charlie Weasley. Oliver Wood kept Fred and George as beaters after their amazing rookie season, and he also took Alicia Spinnett off the reserve team, giving her a spot as one of the team's starting chasers. To complement Alicia's skills, he also brought on a third-year girl named Angelina Johnson and a second-year girl named Katie Bell, and they were perhaps the best group of chasers throughout all four houses. The team was stacked, but they were missing just one position, Seeker, the position Charlie had held for the last six seasons. Luckily, the famous Harry Potter arrived at Hogwarts that year, and following McGonagall seeing Harry's natural skills during his first flying lesson, she delightedly brought him to her house as captain, and Wood was ecstatic to have found the missing piece of his team. Wood taught Harry the basics of the game, and he was even more thrilled when he saw Harry's skills for himself. Harry happened to be the youngest player to be a starter in the last century, and to help him out, McGonagall bent the rules a bit to allow Harry to have his own broomstick despite the fact that he was a first year. And it was not just any broomstick, it was the Nimbus 2000, the fastest broom in the world at the time. In the opening match of the season, the chasers Wood had put together were amazing, Angelina scoring the first goal of the season for any team, and Alicia scoring a penalty shot after Marcus Flint, the captain of the Slytherin team, illegally blocked Harry from getting to the snitch. Harry's broom ended up being hijacked by Quirrell, but once that was squared away thanks to Hermione Granger, Harry raced toward the snitch and caught it by swallowing it. This led to Gryffindor winning the match 170-60. Later that season, Gryffindor played against Hufflepuff, a match that Snape was refereeing, which the Gryffindor team wasn't too fond of, seeing as he was the head of Slytherin. George ended up getting frustrated with some of Snape's calls, and he hit a bludger at him. This penalty ended up not mattering though, as Gryffindor's star seeker sped down and caught the snitch in what was record time, as the game only lasted 5 minutes, the final score being a wildly lopsided 180-20. Gryffindor's season looked so promising, and that Quidditch Cup was very near in view. However, unfortunately, Harry was unconscious in the hospital wing for three days, meaning he could not play in their third and final match for the Cup. Ravenclaw gave Gryffindor their worst defeat in 300 years, which brings us back to that stat from the first match I mentioned from the 1691-1692 season, finally being beaten out for the worst loss to date for Gryffindors. This of course meant that Gryffindor had their 6th straight season without getting the Quidditch Cup. Moving on to the 1992-1993 school year, things didn't start out great as their practice time was taken over by the Slytherins due to them having to train their new seeker Draco Malfoy. On top of that, the Slytherins now each had the fastest broom at the time, the Nimbus 2001s, beating out even Harry's broom. They were so fast that when the twins went to spy on their practice, they reported back saying all they saw were green blurs. Gryffindor's first match of the season was against Slytherin, and things started off horribly as the Slytherins were up 60 to nothing at one point. This was because Harry was being pursued by a rogue bludger that only went after him, meaning that Fred and George were too busy protecting Harry to do their job as beaters. The Slytherins took advantage, and it was just too much for Wood and the Chasers to handle without their beaters. Making things worse, Harry eventually got his arm broken by the rogue bludger. But despite all of that, Harry still caught the snitch and won the game for Gryffindor. 
After the match, Wood was once again very excited about the team, and he once again saw the Quidditch Cup in sight. He had the team practicing every single night after dinner. However, their match against Hufflepuff was unfortunately cancelled due to the attacks on Muggleborns that year. This meant that the season was over and cancelled, and Gryffindor had their 7th straight season with no Quidditch Cup. After failing to get the Quidditch Cup for two straight years with the same team, they had a third year with the same roster, which rarely ever happens. This was Wood's final year though, and he was determined to win that Quidditch Cup. Wood had them training three times a week before the season opener where they would play Slytherin. However, after Slytherin saw the weather forecast for that match, they used Draco's hurt arm as an excuse to postpone their game, instead making Gryffindor open their season playing Hufflepuff. This infuriated the Gryffindor team, and more than anyone else, Wood, as they had spent the last few weeks preparing for Slytherin, not Hufflepuff, which changes their whole game plan. Instead of facing off with Draco Malfoy, Harry would now face off against the Hufflepuff seeker and captain, Cedric Diggory, who was much better bigger than him and Draco. When it came time for the match, the weather was even worse than expected. Harry struggled to see as water kept covering his glasses. Luckily though, when Wood called time out, Hermione put a spell on Harry's glasses to repel the water. When the match resumed, both Harry and Cedric spotted and went after the snitch, but when Dementors entered the pitch, Harry fell off his broom while Cedric was able to catch the snitch to end the game. Seeing what had happened, Cedric offered a rematch, but Gryffindor accepted their defeat, Wood even admitting that Cedric had gotten there before Harry got a chance. He was so depressed though that he stayed in the showers for over an hour. With Cedric catching the snitch, Hufflepuff won by 100 points, and Harry got his first ever loss. The season was not looking too good after the season opener, but things looked up when Ravenclaw flattened Hufflepuff in their November match, which put Gryffindor in a better spot and made them think they had a legitimate chance to win the Quidditch Cup after all. If they beat Ravenclaw in their next match, they would go into second place in the championship. They started practicing five times a week, and Harry was also gifted a Firebolt Broomstick, the fastest broom in the world at the time, and this time it would not be beaten out like the other two fastest brooms were. During their final practice before the match against Ravenclaw, Wood said it was the best practice this team had ever had, which is saying something because they had been together for three years now. For this match, Harry was facing off against Ravenclaw seeker Cho Chang, a fourth year girl who flew on a Comet 260, a much slower broom compared to Harry's Firebolt. The match started off great for Gryffindor as they took an 80 point lead. However, Ravenclaw wasn't going down without a fight as they scored 30 straight points, making it 80 to 30. Harry led Cho in different directions faking her out, but she also came to play as she made him lose sight of the snitch at one point. Eventually though, Harry not only fought off what he thought were four Dementors that turned out to be Malfoy, Crab, Goyle and Flint, but he also caught the snitch to win the game for Gryffindor and to put them into second place. The final score was 230 to 30, making Gryffindor's win by 200 points. Gryffindor watched as Slytherin narrowly defeated Ravenclaw, which was really good for them, but in Slytherin's next match, things didn't look as good as Slytherin destroyed Hufflepuff, meaning they went into the championship leading Gryffindor by 200 points. This meant that Gryffindor would have to beat Slytherin by 210 points in the final to win the Quidditch Cup, which was a daunting task. They were up for the challenge though, and trained every day in preparation for the match. The feud between the two rival houses was stronger than ever, as Slytherin students tried to hurt or sabotage Harry and the other other Gryffindor players. Wood not taking any chances arranged for the team to be escorted to class by other Gryffindors, ensuring his players did not get hurt. This aggressive rivalry carried onto the Quidditch pitch as well, as there were dirty plays from both teams, Fred and George giving the Slytherins a taste of their own medicine. Slytherin missed both of their penalty shots, or rather had it blocked by the exceptional Wood. Meanwhile, the Gryffindor chasers made all three of their penalty shots. The score was eventually 70-10 to in favor of Gryffindor, and at that moment, Harry saw the snitch. He knew that they had enough points to win it all, and he raced after it. However, Draco grabbed onto the back of his broom, illegally stopping Harry from getting to the snitch, but also awarding another penalty shot for Gryffindor. But Alicia was so angry that she missed it. Slytherin took advantage of the Gryffindor's anger, and they scored a goal, making it 70-20, to meaning that if Harry caught the snitch now, they would not win the cup. However, Angelina scored again, making it 80-20, to but at that moment, Harry saw Draco diving for the snitch. Panicked, he raced after it as well, and luckily his firebolt was faster than Draco's Nimbus 2001. He knocked Draco out of the way and caught the snitch to win it all for Gryffindor for the first time in 8 seasons, the final score being 230-20. to All of the Gryffindor players raced to Harry, and they all embraced in the air knowing that they had finally done it. They had finally won the Quidditch Cup. As they flew down to the ground still embracing, there were tears everywhere, not just with the players, but in McGonagall's eyes as well. 
Wood left Hogwarts on top, finally getting that championship, and he was one of a few Gryffindor Quidditch players to play professionally as he joined Puddlemere United's reserve team. The following year had no Quidditch as the Triwizard Tournament took its place, so we now move on to the 1995-1996 to season. The now 7th year Angelina Johnson took Wood's place as captain of the team, and the only position she had to fill was keeper. Alicia, Katie, Fred, George, and Harry all returned. They had tryouts for Keeper, where Ron Weasley beat out Vicky Frobisher and Gregory Hooper. During the team's first training session with Ron, Ron was jeered by Slytherins in the crowd, which made him throw the quaffle so hard it gave Katie a bloody nose. Then, he wasn't great at Keeper, completely forgetting to cover the middle ring, probably the most important one. And to make things worse, Fred and George gave Katie one of their joke candies, thinking it was the one to stop a nosebleed, but they actually gave her the one that causes a nosebleed, which stopped practice altogether. As their season opener got closer, they trained every day, but on the morning of the first match, the Slytherins donned We Weasley is their king badges, which came along with a song they started singing during the match that pretty much thanked Ron for being so bad that he just handed the Slytherins points. When the score was 40-10 to 10 in favor of Slytherin, Harry bailed his best friend out and beat Malfoy to the snitch to win the game. However, he was then illegally struck by a bludger in the back of his head after the match was over, courtesy of the new Slytherin beater, Vincent Crabb. Meanwhile, down on the ground, Malfoy made awful comments about Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, as well as about Harry's mother, which caused Harry and George to charge at Malfoy, and they beat the crap out of him with their bare hands. Fred tried to get there as well, but he was just barely being held back by all three of the chasers, Katie, Angelina, and Alicia. This fight led to Umbridge banning Fred, George, and Harry from ever playing Quidditch again at Hogwarts, so the team had no beaters or a seeker. Fred and George were replaced by Jack Sloper and Andrew Kirk, and Harry was replaced by Ginny Weasley, who was actually really good. She had snuck in the Burroughs broom shed as a child and used her brother's brooms to practice, which made her better than any of her brothers could have ever imagined. In their first match with their new roster, Hufflepuff defeated Gryffindor in a 22 minute long game, the final score of which was 240 to 230. It was full of bad mistakes for Gryffindor, with the only good part being the fact that the game was short. Sloper missed a bludger and hit Angelina in the mouth. Kirk shrieked and fell off his broom when Zachariah Smith, the chaser on the Hufflepuff team, came zooming toward him with a quaffle, and Ron let in all 14 shots against him. Luckily, Ginny ended it early, catching the snitch from right under the Hufflepuff Seeker's nose, greatly reducing Gryffindor's deficit. Later in the season, Hufflepuff narrowly defeated Slytherin, which was very good for Gryffindors as they went into their final match, which was against Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw's captain Roger Davies took the first shot, and Ron let it in. However, after that, Ron turned it on, saving quite a few goals. As the match went on, it became clear that Gryffindor had a chance at winning the Quidditch Cup. They just had to get a certain number of points. This is when Ginny stepped up as she beat the Ravenclaw seeker Cho Chang to the snitch, winning the match and the Quidditch Cup for Gryffindor, and also making Cho cry. Following the victory, they carried the MVP of the game, Ron, on their shoulders, turning the taunting Weasley as our King song into Gryffindor's own victory chant. That then brings us to the 1996 to 1997 season. Harry was appointed captain of the team as he entered his sixth year playing a seeker. The only player still there from his original team was Chaser Katie Bell. Now that Harry was back at seeker, he moved Ginny to Chaser to replace Alicia, which was a position she much preferred anyway, and Harry brought in Demelza Robbins to replace Angelina. With both of the twins gone and the beaters from the previous season graduated, Harry replaced them with Richie Coote and Jimmy Peaks. Then, the only thing left was to see if Ron should continue as keeper. Ron ended up beating Cormac McLaggen out for the job, though we did have some help from Hermione who confunded Cormac during his tryout. Before the first match, Katie Bell got seriously injured while in Hogsmeade, meaning Harry had to turn to his reserve chaser, Dean Thomas. Gryffindor's first match was won against a depleted Slytherin team, as Malfoy was absent for the game, meaning they had a backup seeker in, and Slytherin's best chaser Vasey was out with a head injury. Harry had also made Ron think he had drunk liquid luck, which gave him an insane amount of confidence as he saved goal after goal, and Gryffindor defeated Slytherin by 250 points. After the match, Ginny flew into the announcer's box, taking Zachariah Smith down. This was payback for badmouthing the Gryffindors all game while announcing, and when McGonagall confronted Ginny, she hilariously apologized for forgetting the break. 
Before the next match, Ron was in the hospital wing, and Harry was forced to bring in his reserve keeper, Cormac McLaggen. Right away, he was not good for the team, as he bossed everyone around, thinking he was better at their positions than they were. He also kept telling Harry what to do as captain and how to run the team, and all of this carried into the match as well. He flew away from the goalpost, took Peaks as bad, and was showing him how to swing it correctly. As Harry went over to put a stop to this, McLaggen nailed the bludger, mishit it, and hit Harry in the head, knocking him out and fracturing his skull. The final score saw Hufflepuff winning 320 to 60. Going into their final match, Harry was holding regular practices, the team he had originally put together finally back as Katie, himself, and Ron were all healed up. During one practice close to the game, Harry said it was the best he had seen the team play while he was captain. The Gryffindor team knew that they had a chance to win the Quidditch Cup for the third year in a row, of course skipping over Harry's fourth year with the Triwizard Tournament. However, their chances plummeted when Harry got detention every Saturday for the remainder of the school year after his fight with Draco, and this meant that Harry would miss the final. Because of this, Harry had to move some positions around, as he put Ginny back at Seeker and had Dean Thomas return as the third chaser. Even without their captain, the team Harry had formed came together and played brilliantly. Ginny once again swooped under Cho Chang to get the snitch just as she did last season, and Gryffindor won both the match and the Quidditch Cup, the final score being 450 to 140. That was of course Harry's final year at Hogwarts, as he did not return for his seventh year, meaning he did not play Quidditch again. It's funny that his final time on the pitch was being knocked out by his own keeper with his own beaters bad. Nevertheless though, Harry was able to bring home three Quidditch Cups out of his five years playing, which certainly outshines Charlie, who could only bring one. However, Harry did miss the final for two of those seasons, so there's still an argument to be made about who's better. Both Harry and Charlie could have gone pro if they wanted to, but neither went down that path, Charlie deciding to work with dragons, and Harry deciding to become an Auror. However, there is one Gryffindor who did go pro, and that was Ginny Weasley, who went on to play Chaser for the Hollyhead Harpies, which shows just how good she was was, as Oliver Wood couldn't even get a starting position on a team that wasn't a reserve team. Quidditch talent would also be passed down in the family, as Ginny's niece Rose Granger Weasley, Ron and Hermione's daughter, went on to play Chaser during her second year, which was the 2018-2019 to season, and she would continue to play until her final year in the 2023-2024 to season, which wraps this timeline up because that is everything we know about the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.